I'm Natalie Rogers with Tat Your Own Adventure, and today we're going to look at how to form a Catherine wheel join. The benefit of a Catherine wheel join is it joins from the bottom side of your working chain, and it connects into the top of the pico, and it puts an entire stitch into the top of the pico, so it makes for un un uninterrupted work on your chain. Um, as you can see from my previous video, this is a piece I had started on another video. Um, this was a lock join, this last one. So once we get the first Catherine wheel join in, we'll take a look and see how those two join types compare to each other. Okay, so to do a Catherine wheel join, you're going to let your working thread, that core thread that you've been using um, to make all of your stitches, is just going to dangle. We, we want that kind of out of the way. What we're going to do is we're going to take our crochet hook, we're going to go up through this pico that we want to join to. We're going to go behind the core thread that's now just hanging out. We're going to grab the thread that's around our hand and pull it through that pico. Then we are going to take that thread off of our hand, so off of the loom your fingers make, and you are going to post it through this loop. So the way I figure out which side um, I want to put my shuttle through is I, I set up my loop so that one side doesn't move. That's the side that's attached to the last pair of stitches. The other side slides because it's attached to my shuttle. I want to come through um, from the left hand side through that loop when the one that doesn't move is on the back and the one that's attached to the shuttle is on the front. Okay. And so I put my shuttle through. Do not tighten yet. We've got some other steps that we have to complete before we can tighten. So what we're going to do is we're going to tug on the shuttle thread. Okay. And that's going to pull the loop that we went through, through back through that Pico. And that's going to help it um, so that we can still move around. Um, it doesn't lock into place. Okay. We're then going to pull up on that loop that's around the thread. Okay. And we are going to work on sliding over the first loop that we have now just flipped back to the other side. And so what we want to do, and we can tug on this every once in a while, okay, is we want that loop to close up right snug next to the last stitch. So that's the first half of our stitch. And then we're going to take our shuttle and we're going to look again. There's one thread that's coming off the back side and there's one thread that's coming off closer to, to the front. Um, it's right underneath that stitch. The one that's closer to the front is the one we want to make sure we pass under from right to left. Okay. And that's going to fold over and form the cap of this stitch. And then we're going to tug on our shuttle thread until that cinches up. And there you have it. You have a stitch inside that pico. You can see how both pant legs come down into that pico. And there's the cap and it just continues on. So now I'm going to put a couple more stitches next to it and then we'll take a look at how that one compares with the lock join that we did in a previous video. So let me just put in uh, five stitches here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So now we can come back and look at our two different join types. So if you look at the lock join that was done in a previous video. It pinches our chain and you can see the teal thread coming up into that join, okay? You will always see that when you do that type of join. When you do a Catherine wheel join, if you notice, we just see the purple stitch where it comes up and joins in. We don't actually see the teal thread. If I flip it over, it just looks like 
the backside of a stitch. You don't see the teal thread at all, so it hides that teal thread and makes a basically a blipless join um, so that you can just continue on and it the join does not interfere with your chain. Um, it goes along with the curve. It doesn't do the pinch that causes the V with the lock join. So whenever you need a smooth join from the bottom, you're going to want to use a Catherine wheel join when you're working those chains. Okay, so we're going to do it a couple more times. You can see on this one, I didn't quite snug it up fully because it is hanging down a little bit further um, than the other stitches next to it. Uh, the tighter you can pull that first stitch and subsequently the second stitch, uh, the smoother your chain connection will be. Okay, so we zoom back out and we will take a look at that step again because it's quite the process. Lock joins a lot simpler, but this is definitely beneficial when you're working various patterns and you don't want to interrupt what you're currently doing. So again, we're going to just let our core thread here hang out. That's my teal thread. We're going to come up through this pico. So I'm going from the front to the back with my crochet hook. I'm going behind that core shuttle thread to grab the thread over my finger and pull it through. And then I'm taking that shuttle that was wrapped around my hand off of my hand so that I can post it through. Again, I want the one that doesn't move to the back, the one that slides, which is attached to the shuttle in the front. And I'm going to go from left to right. Okay. Then I'm going to grab that shuttle thread and pull on it. And this is going to pull that loop back through the Pico and it's going to actually cause the shuttle thread now, or the, the thread from the shuttle is now looped around that initial thread that I pulled through. Okay. Then at this point, I'm going to tug one of these is tugging. One way is going to move your shuttle up and down. Um, we really want our shuttle to kind of stay put. So we'll tug on the other side. And in doing so, we're going to be sliding the loop that was your initial loop is going to get smaller and smaller to make the first half of our stitch. Again, you want to make sure it's pulled snug. And then once it's pulled snug enough, you're then going to figure out which side moves. Again, the moving side is going to be the one that we want in front, the non-moving side to the back. Another way to look at it is one of them comes off the back of the stitch. That should be towards the back. The other one comes off the front. You don't want to twist here. Then you're going to take your shuttle and go out the opposite way that we did earlier. So now we're going to go right to left. And then we will work on cinching down the second half of that stitch. To give us a completed stitch that is inside our Pico. And then we'll continue on with a few more stitches. We'll do five more, keep it consistent. Okay, so if we take a look at that again, it's staying in the curve of the chain that I'm working. The back side also does not show the teal, so the teal literally tucks into the purple, into that top row. So again, the Catherine wheel join can be tricky to learn, but once you've learned it, it's fantastic to use anytime you don't want a broken um, element on the outside as you're connecting to picos below um, your current stitches. So again, we're going to go 
down through our Pico that we want to join to underneath our core thread to grab the thread around our finger and pull that back through. Then we're going to figure out the side that doesn't move and the side that moves. Make sure the side that doesn't move is in the back. Take the shuttle off of our hands. Put the shuttle through from left. I dropped my shuttle. I'll try that again. Put the shuttle through from left to right. Then gr grab the shuttle thread in the back of that loop that you just made around here to pull that first loop back through the Pico. And then after that first loop is pulled back through the Pico, you want to grab that loop that just got formed that's wrapped around it. And we're going to pull on that one. And in doing so, it's going to make that first loop smaller. And we want to bring that first loop all the way down to snug right next to the last stitch. Okay, I am um, tensioning my core thread a little bit to make sure that that's not getting in the way and I'm actually pulled tight. And then I need to figure out which one moves and which one doesn't. I want the moving one in front, the non-moving one in back. Or again, looking at which one comes off the back side versus which one is ready to wrap as a cap. And I'll take my shuttle and go back through from right to left. And then at that point, that's when we're going to close this down, pull it tight to finish off that stitch. Okay, so we have a two-legged belted stitch there, and then I can continue on with my chain. So I'll do a couple stitches after this, and then we'll take one more look at the total effect of using Catherine wheel joins to join to Pico's below your work. So if I wanted those Picos to have stood up totally straight, I would have wanted to put some more stitches between my joins. But you can still see how it makes for a much smoother look than a lock join does. So lock join is great for when you want that V. Whereas when you want a smoother chain, you're definitely going to want to use that Catherine wheel join. And when you want to not see um, the thread that you're joining to within your work, you're going to want to use that Catherine wheel join to hide it. You can see on the front and back that we do not see, we only see the Pico part. We don't see where it joined that's been joined over by the purple. So there you go. That is a Catherine wheel joint. <laughs>